Greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here at the same time, every weekend, same station. So join us. We are here, and I'm so happy to have you with us. And we have lots to talk about today. A lot of good information that can help you have a better quality of life. Now, all the things we talk about may not specifically help you, but we have to cover a variety of topics so that we reach as many people as we can to help them change their lives, their health, the vitality of their lives. We can change. Just because you are fighting a condition, a disease, doesn't mean that you can't conquer it, that you can't be triumphant. We can make changes that are unbelievable. Just believe it. In all of our conditions, good or bad, are based on 98% of our choices. We make who we are by choices that we do every day. So you can make changes, no matter how bad the change is or how bad the change needs to be to make change and how bad the condition is. Don't ever give up. Always have hope. And miracles occur every day. No matter how old you are, how young you are, how bad off you think you are, there's somebody that is worse off than you are and that has conquered already their health condition. So we're going to talk about Boswellia. I know I just talked about Boswellia a few weeks ago, but that was a general topic of Boswellia. But today we're going to talk about why Boswellia will help you breathe better. How it can improve bronchitis, sinusitis, emphysema, COPD. If you have a breathing problem, Boswellia is the answer for you. And is obesity killing you and damaging our hearts? And what is sun downing? There is help for sun downing. S-U-N. Downing. D-O-W-N-I-N-G. And how you damage your liver. You may not even know that some of the things you do cause abuse and damage to your liver. And your liver is the most one of the most important organs in your body. It has over 300 different biological functions, metabolic functions. And let's talk about ashwagandha. If you want more energy, more stress reduction, feeling better, have a better night's sleep, have a better sexual life. Ashwagandha is for you. And then we'll talk about vitamin D3 and some of the unexpected benefits from the vitamin D3. Have you ever heard of alpha lipoic acid? Oh, I'm sure some of you have. Some of you do a lot of research, I know. I talk to people that listen to the show. They run into me someplace or when I pop into the stores, health food stores around the area. They catch me by surprise, but I'm always happy to hear their stories. And people really do pay attention to their health and education of their health. So what is Boswellium? Let's just do a summary. 
I know I talked about it a couple of weeks ago, but I know I have new listeners today. And maybe you weren't here when I talked about Boswellia before. But let's just acquaint ourselves with Boswellia. Spelled B-O-S. B like in boy. O-S. W-E-L-L-I-A. It's a tree. Primarily native to India, North Africa, and the Arabian Peninsula. And there are over 20 distinct species of the Boswellia family. And it truly is a medicine. In fact, it does some things that no drug has ever been developed that can match Boswellia. Now, you may have heard of a COX-2 inhibitor. There are drugs, there are natural ingredients, like curcumin is a natural COX-2 inhibitor. COX-2 is an enzyme. It's a pathway in the body, and it's involved with inflammation and pain. So if you have pain, it's because you have too many prostaglandins being produced by the COX-2 pathway. So you want to reduce or inhibit the COX-2 pathway to reduce the pain and inflammation. But there's another pathway called the 5-LUX, L-O-X, 5-LUX pathway or enzyme system. And Boswellia inhibits the 5 lux pathway. There has, there has, there had never has been a drug developed to yet today that inhibits the 5 lux pathway. The best choice in the world for reducing the 5 lux pathway is Boswellia. And the medicine of Boswellia that inhibits the 5 lux pathway is a resin that's derived by scraping the tree bark. You know, when you tap a maple tree, there's a sap that runs out, right? And you collect that sap, and eventually you make maple syrup. Well, when you slash, slash, with knives, the tree bark of Boswellia, there's a sap or a resin that runs out of the bark in a way to heal the scraping. And these are called the tears of India because they'll run down the bark and at the, excuse me, at the bottom of the resin it forms a drop, a hardened drop, and it's called the Tears of India. These Tears of India are scraped off the bark, pulverized into a powder, and therefore you have Boswellia powder. But there's more that has to be done. It has to be purified. It has to be concentrated to make it into a natural medicine. And the five lux pathway is intimately involved with the lungs. Five lux is an enzyme that helps create inflammatory compounds, anti-inflammatory compounds. And these compounds are called leukotrienes. In the COX-2, they're called prostaglandins. In the 5 lux, it's called leukotrienes. If there's an excessive level of these compounds called leukotrienes, it's going to interfere with your lung and bronchial function. And these leukotrienes are associated with asthma, allergies, joint inflammation, 
and inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's disease or colitis or mucus colitis and other compounds from Boswellia that interfere with the body's ability to cure, cure cancer cells or kill cancer cells. Boswellia contains these compounds. In a comparison study, people with asthma were found to have a 5 lux level up to 50% higher than healthy controls. That means healthy people have less COX-2 leukotrienes, 50% less. So you want to inhibit the 5 lux pathway if you have asthma or COPD or bronchitis, sinusitis. And similarly, anti-inflammatory compounds that are generated by Boswellia affects the 5 lux activity because if you have these conditions, like COPD or bronchitis or sinusitis, these people have more than twice as high levels of these compounds called leukotrienes. So we want to lower them. Right now, drug companies are trying to find a drug, develop a new drug that will be what they call effective to lower the leukotrienes to inhibit the 5 lux pathway. But today, there is no drug developed that affects the 5 lux pathway. Boswellia is the true medicine for lowering the levels of leukotrienes or these compounds that are developed by the 5 lux pathway. These pathways are not bad. But when they are excessively produced, they are bad. Water is not bad. But when you have a ton of water coming into your house, that's bad. So leukotrienes are healthy. Prostaglandins are healthy in the right level, in the right balance for your body chemistry. And we want to keep it that way. So we can use curcumin and boswellia especially together, to balance both pathways. That's the way I like to use them. And drugs like acetaminophen, otherwise known as Tylenol, and any other NSAID, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, like aspirin, do not work on 5 lux inflammation. It does not stop inflammation. In fact, it increases inflammation. These non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and acetaminophen or Tylenol, Aleve, Advil, they actually make the damage more than normally without the drug. No doctor would ever prescribe Tylenol for an asthma attack. In fact, one study found that children with asthma who received acetaminophen, Tylenol, to treat a fever were more likely to have an asthma attack than children with asthma who did not receive ibuprofen for fevers. Drugs make them worse. Tylenol causes more damage to the joints. It might give you some temporary relief, but in the long run, it causes more damage to the joints, 
causes more destruction to the cartilage that protects your bones, your joints. So Boswellia is a lifesaver for those people that have COPD, bronchitis, emphysema, sinusitis, any kind of lung condition, an intestinal condition, like Crohn's disease, or any form of colitis, IBD, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, and Boswellia fixes the five lux pathway. And this resin that requires purification from the tree called Boswellia has been used medicinally for thousands of years. And drug companies now are trying, they're competing against each other, trying to find a drug, and they have not found a drug to this date that will successfully, effectively inhibit the 5 lux pathway. So what Boswellia does, it opens the airways. It reduces bronchial and sinus swelling and is a very specific inhibitor of the 5 lux enzyme. So this all sounds very technical. All you have to remember is Boswellia treats asthmatic asthmatic patients, bronchitis, sinusitis, anything in the lung area. 70% of asthma patients treated with Boswellia had improvement and improved lung function versus only 27% of subjects that did not were not treated with Boswellia. They were the control group. They did not receive treatment. Now, especially when you take Boswellia and you mix it with time, not on the, not on the clock, the spice, time, T-H-Y-M-E. Raven Sara, another wonderful, fantastic essential oil. And the oil of myrtle. These three oils, in fact, thyme, kills 95% of all bacteria. These are very life-saving essential oils and very effective in the proper dosage that are safe and effective long-term. Sometimes you will read essential oils should not be used internally. But in the right dosage and for the right condition and the right selection of the essential oils, it works extremely effective and very safe. All this research is coming out of Europe. They are so far ahead of us in advanced information on how to treat conditions with natural remedies. Now, these three essential oils reduce inflammation. Now, all of our mucous membranes have a hair-like projections like silica, but it's spelled C-I-L-I-C-A. And these little hair-like projections function very effectively. They wave like, like if you were to walk through a wheat field and you would see the wheat blowing in the wind, that's what this does. It functions very effectively and have a very powerful antibacterial effect to prevent infection 
and also to move the mucus up so that it could be expelled. Thyme and ivy, two of my favorite essential oils, because just a very small dosage of each of them, thyme and ivy together, are what we call expectorants. That means it thins out the mucus and clear it from the lungs. You don't ever want to express a cough. You don't want to stop a cough. You want to clear out the mucus by coughing. Coughing is a natural process of the body to clear the junk out of the lungs. Don't try to suppress it. But keep it in control and check. So how to pick out a really good Boswellia extract? Well, first of all, look for Boswellia extract, which are labeled to contain less than 5% beta, that's B-E-T-A, beta boswellic acids, and that it has a at least 10% A-K-B-A. There are four letters, A-K-B-A. And that stands for the most powerful compound in Boswellia. Boswellia has no known adverse effects. Absolutely safe. No side effects. And it's very, very powerful, especially when Boswellia is used in a combination with the essential oils of thyme, ravensara, and myrtle for upper respiratory systems. Very effective for clearing out the mucus in the lung area, the congestion in the sinuses, and help you to breathe better. Anyone with asthma, COPD, they need drugs and inhaler. Now, if you're on these drugs, I'm not telling you to go off any of your drugs. Your doctor understands that you're in a position where you may need them. But you can also use Boswellia along with the combination of the oils of thyme, even sour, and myrtle because there are no known side effects. And they work very effectively with any medication. There's no counterindications. Very effective. You know, obesity, about almost pushing up to 50%, 50, wow, I, I want you to really understand the impact of this. Obesity is not just overweight. It's grossly overweight. It's one of the number one causes of 17 different kinds of cancer. Being overweight isn't just being overweight. It isn't just being out of shape. It's being very sick. People who are obese are very sick. And we are pushing up to 50% of American population as being obese. By the year 2050, they project everybody in America will be obese. And it's killing us. Obesity is killing us, and especially doing so much damage to our hearts. In fact, obesity-related heart death, not disease, but death from heart disease, has tripled in the last few years. Tripled. Heart disease was always the number one cause of death in the United States. But now researchers have collected data on 280,000 deaths, 280,000 deaths in the last 20 years. And overall, heart disease was the most common cause of death. Heart disease. 
It's a muscle. We can strengthen that muscle in a number of ways. We can improve circulation. Have better cardiovascular circulation. Have more blood flowing through the arteries and veins. But the number of deaths from heart disease where obesity was a key factor, key contributing factor, has tripled. And obesity now affects about 48%. I said pushing up to 50%. 48% of Americans. And it's up 10% in the last 10 years. Black Americans are obese to the tune of 48%. Hispanics, 44%. And white Americans, 42%. And it's being pushed up every 10 years by about 10%. And overall, only 33% of women, this is such a sad statistic. Sad, sad, because Here is one of our abilities to choose correctly. But overall, only 33% of women and 25% of men have a normal body weight. That is sad. When this is not a disease and we can stop being overweight, by just choosing the right kind of diet to maintain a healthy weight in proportion to our body size. That's all we need to do. Easy. As they say, easy peasy. So with that, my friends, I've got to pause here. We're at at the bottom of the hour. Time to take a break. Oh, I'm not going anywhere. And I don't want you to go anywhere either. I want you to come back and join me right here on Terry Talks Nutrition. I'm Terry, Naturally. And welcome back, my friends. This is Terry, Naturally. We're here at the bottom of the hour, and we'll be here to the top of the hour. So don't go anywhere. We have lots more coming your way. A lot of, one, one little nugget may change your life. One little word could change your life. One little topic could change your life. It all comes about learning how to take care of your health, And that you, you and I are responsible for our health. No one else. Not your family, not your spouses, not your loved ones, not anybody. Not your doctor, not drug companies. Nobody is responsible for your health but us, you and I. So we're going to talk about sundowning. S-U-N-D-O-W-N-I-N-G, sundowning. Have you heard of that before? Well, it's a condition based on dementia. People with Alzheimer's disease and other types of dementia often experience increased levels of confusion, agitation, and anxiety in the late afternoon and early evening. This is called sundowning syndrome because it occurs late in the afternoon around sunset, early evening. In fact, about 45% of Alzheimer's disease patients have disruptions in their sleep cycle and sundowning agitation. Is there help for these people? Yes. These are caused by disrupted melatonin levels 
that have been found in patients with dementia who struggle with sundowning syndrome. Melatonin is such an important molecule, it's not a hormone. All the researchers that have been re researching for as long as 40 years or more believe it is a molecule, a very healthy and natural molecule that's secreted in the body, but over time we secrete less due to age but everybody should be supplementing their health with melatonin. It's that critical. Every cell in our body has a receptor site, has a docking station for melatonin. Melatonin will hook up with the cells in our body, not just for sleep, but for every condition imaginable. Now, if you want more information on melatonin, I'm only going to speak a few minutes about it in regards to sundowning. But for all, it's a, it's a very powerful anti-inflammatory. It's a very powerful antioxidant. It's very important for your heart. It's very, very important for reducing cancer. Melatonin is not just for sleep. And I wrote a book on melatonin because I think it's that important of a subject that everybody should be aware of it. And you can find my book in health food stores on my website, terrytalksnutrition.com and also on Amazon. Get the book called Wake Up and Live. Melatonin is just not for sleep. But when you supplement melatonin, it can be very helpful in restoring a normal sleep-wake cycle and reducing agitation or irritability. Scientists who, conduce, who conducted a study, a review, of 17 studies on melatonin used by people with dementia, recommended starting with a dose of about six milligrams for at least four months. Take it about sundown, sunset, because that's the time when we release, should release, melatonin from the pineal gland in the brain. But we today don't have enough melatonin to be released. And we stay up way too long through the night. It's not unusual for many people to stay up till midnight. And you should be taking the melatonin at sunset. You might be three, four hours late in secreting melatonin. And if you take melatonin before you go to bed and you get up and the first opportunity of your eyes being affected by light, melatonin stops being produced. It's a very, very important molecule. So start thinking about using melatonin daily. If you have serious health concerns, like arthritis, lots of inflammation in your body, cancer, take melatonin through the day. It's a natural supplement. It's a natural molecule. It's not just for going to sleep at night. That will help, of course. But melatonin has... Well, there's over 28,000 studies showing how melatonin works on every health condition imaginable. Now, I had mentioned before in the beginning of the program how valuable our liver is to our health. It has over 300 different functions. 
And it isn't just alcohol that is hard on our liver. A lot of people that drink heavy, especially hard liquor, scotch, whiskey, all, you know, all the stuff that's too hard. Well, actually, actually, it's just too hard on our liver. So researchers wanted to see how much damage is done by other conditions other than alcohol. So they collected over 20 years of nutritional health data from almost 100,000 women. Actually, this was part of the Women's Health Initiative study that has been going on for years. So they were looking at the incidence of liver disease. The result of this study, women who consumed one or more sugar sweetened beverage daily had an 85% higher risk of liver cancer and a 68% higher risk of dying from a chronic liver disease. Now, let me just say that over again. Because we were talking about hard alcohol, right? How it damages the liver. A lot of alcoholics eventually will have cirrhosis of the liver, scarring of the liver, which causes so much liver damage and possibly cancer of the liver. We can't live without our liver. But when you re- when you take all when you actually replace all those healthy liver cells with scar tissue, those liver cells are dead. And so this is caused by alcohol. But now we have a new condition called non-alcoholic liver disease, meaning not by alcohol. But by what? What causes liver damage today that is not an alcohol? You're right, sugar. And sugar is sweetened drinks. That means juice as well. Any sugar sweetened drink. Now, you aren't sweetening the drink. The drink is just naturally sweet. So don't stop, I should say, yes, stop any soft drink that contains sugar, any sugar-sweetened beverage, but also juice. Don't replace it with juice. That's not healthy. It sounds healthy, but it's not. No juice is healthy. No juice is healthy. You are getting way, way too much sugar. And that causes 85% higher risk of liver cancer and a 68% higher risk of dying from a chronic liver disease compared to those who had fewer than three sugar sweetened beverages in a month. I know people that drink four or five cans or some beverage of a sweetened soft drink, high fructose corn syrup, the worst sugar in the world. Your sugar can't, your liver can't take that amount of sugar. Now, there are some natural remedies that can protect your liver. But that doesn't mean you should drink juice. That doesn't mean you can drink soft drinks. Stop the soft drinks. Stop the juice. And then add these protective liver botanicals. And the first botanical is andrographis. It reduces fat deposits in the liver by 33%. It increases the protective antioxidant levels in the liver. 
It reduces insulin levels by 42%. This is all beneficial for healthy liver. And then OPCs from French grapeseed extract. In, in, in patients with fatty liver, French grapeseed extract reduced liver enzyme levels by 46%. And liver enlargement by about 10%. How can we have liver enlargement? Well, the liver takes on so much fat that a normal liver in a healthy person is probably weighs four to five pounds or less. But it can actually be enlarged to 20 pounds. When you see a very large obese person, everything inside is out of proportion, enlarged as well as they are enlarged. Just think about that. Because you don't see the liver, you don't see all the organs and glands, but they're all damaged by the amount of fat that's in our body or on our body. So andrographis, French grapeseed extract, and milk thistle, one of the best known botanicals for the liver. Not the most effective, but the best known because it has been researched in Europe for 40 to 50 years or more. And it's that thistle that we see growing in our backyard, in the garden, or along the wayside, along ditches. It has a purple top. It is, it is one of the best known botanicals for the liver due to the research that's been done over 50 or more years in Europe, in Europe not in the United States, but it's available in the United States. It also in human clinical trials, patients with liver disease were treated with milk thistle and it reduced the elevated liver enzymes by as much as up to 30%. In some cases, returning liver enzymes to normal values So for a healthy liver, here's my recommendation. Take 200 milligrams of andrographis along with 100 milligrams of French grapeseed extract, 100 milligrams of milk thistle. This can be found, you probably can find this in a capsule, in a combination. And take this twice a day for improving your liver. Reduce the sugar drastically. Stay away from the sweets. Stay away from excessive carbohydrates. All carbohydrates, meaning bread, cereals, grains, pasta, crackers, cookies, whatever, all the carbohydrates are potentially sugar. In the body, we can't digest carbohydrates. We have to convert them to sugar by digesting them into sugar. So they're all sugar. Most people don't eat anything else but sugar, not just sugar in the bowl or sugar by the spoonful. But all these carbohydrates eventually will be sugar in the body. Now, here's one of my favorite herbs. Ashwagandha, spelled A like apple, S-H-W-A-G-A-N-D-H-A, ashwagandha. It's a remarkable herb from India. It is a true mind-body combination. The benefits for both mind and body. Ashwagandha has benefits for both physical and mental health. 
it reduces the effects of stress on the body. If you're in a stressful situation, you're stressed out on the job, you're stressed out at home, you're stressed out running the kids around from, from event to event, you have increased stress due to financial obligations, relationships, marriages, whatever. And when you have stress, then that increases your cortisol levels. But in a study of stressed adults taking ashwagandha, the cortisol levels were reduced by 23%. Increases energy levels. Improves sleep. Sleep quality. Improved by 57% in patients with sleep problems treated with ashwagandha. Take 100 to 200 milligrams of ashwagandha before you go to bed at night. It'll help you sleep much, much better. Get a good night's sleep with ashwagandha. And reduce the symptoms of anxiety and depression by as much as 30 to 40%. And reduces depression and anxiety in otherwise healthy but stressed out people. And it boosts both male and female fertility, libido, sexual desire, sexual performance. It has also been called Indian ginseng. Ginseng does not grow in India. It's not a plant that's native to India. They don't grow it domestically. They don't grow it in a way of farming ginseng. So ashwagandha has so many qualities that are similar to ginseng that is referred to as Indian ginseng. Now they found that ashwagandha can be used as a treatment for COVID-19. And now we see more COVID popping up here and there. 60 people in India with mild to moderate COVID infections were treated with this Ayurvedic medicine which includes 500 milligrams of ashwagandha daily or a placebo for two weeks. And the recovery time from the infection, recovery after the infection was 50% faster for those treated with ashwagandha and 25% more of the group completely cleared of the virus by the end of the trial versus the placebo group. And there are no known side effects, no adverse effects. It's known as an adaptogen, truly very safe. And it was reported and no one symptoms got worse over the study period. Everyone in the Ayurvedic group improved Those on the ashwagandha improved the quality of their health and life by 50%. I think this is one of the most wonderful of herbs. And now it's available in the United States. What should you know when you shop for ashwagandha? How do you know what you're really getting? There are so many adulterated plants, so many adulterated herbs and botanicals. And some people are just not even putting the right herb in the capsule. And some capsules are so weak and of very little value. Typical extracts are standardized to about 5% of the withanalides. 
This is the name of the key compound that's found in the root of ashwagandha. But now more recent research has found a higher standardization, not 5%, but 35%, seven times stronger. So about 150 milligrams, one to three times daily. No side effects, no adverse effects, no adverse events. Very safe. So I would put that on my shopping list, number one. For all the things that ashwagandha does, it, it, oh, I hate saying it's a miracle, but it sure is a wonderful, beautiful plant that can provide us with so many benefits. So now they've found out more benefits for vitamin D. D like in dog. Vitamin D benefits beyond building bones and the immune function. Vitamin D helps strengthen skin cells, reduces inflammation, helps treat inflammatory skin diseases, including eczema, acne, psoriasis. And it can also thicken your hair. Vitamin D stimulates hair follicles to grow. The low levels of vitamin D have also been linked to alopecia, an autoimmune disease which causes hair loss with no known cure. Vitamin D has been associated with reducing this condition. Vitamin D prevents dementia. Older adults who took vitamin D supplement were 40% less likely, 40% less likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. So what should you know about shopping for vitamin D? Well, D3. You don't want to buy D2. D3 is the most beneficial form. It's the best form for increasing vitamin D levels in the body. And most experts around the world recommend a minimum, minimum of 5,000 IU of vitamin D daily for most people. I wondered about my own levels of vitamin D. And I was taking 5,000 to 10,000 units of vitamin D. And I had it checked by a very reputable third-party laboratory. And it was very, very low. So I kicked it up to 20,000 units of vitamin D daily. And I'm now I'm in the right target range for the best, healthiest level of vitamin D. Maybe you want yours checked too. Your doctor can do it. A laboratory can do it. You don't have to go to a doctor have it done. You can go to anyone or send it out online. There's ways to have your vitamin D levels checked. And this will help you to have the right level because it's so important. Just because you take it doesn't mean it's helping. You want to take the right level for the right absorption. And with that, my friends, I'm all out of time. It goes by way, way too fast. I enjoy being with you on this weekend, and I'm here every weekend, same time, same station, so you can always join me, you can tell your friends, your relatives, your family, I want you to have more knowledge of how you can make changes in your life by using some of these studies and these tips and these concepts and whatever. But my friends, I've got to get out of here. I know they're waiting for me to, to leave the station, and but you can listen and watch. I should say, well, Watch, but you can listen anytime that you'd like to be on and say, be with us, say a prayer. My friends, say for this crazy, crazy world, it, it's so upsetting. I can't begin to tell you. God bless you, my friends. God bless this great country. 
Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.